Welcome to this episode of Horrific History and Hauntings. I'm Beth. And I'm Ramey. We're your hosts, here to talk about the stories that the history books ignore. From horrific epidemics and ghostly hauntings to the catastrophes and tragic events that have sickened humanity. Beth, what are we doing today? Another episode on the alphabet of death. Ah, oh, okay. Those are fun. Mm-hmm. Again, we have an Amazon affiliate link if you would like to purchase the book I used for this research. It's called Final Exits and the Illustrated Encyclopedia of How We Die by Michael Largo. The paperback is $12.99 on Amazon. Just click the affiliate link in the description below. It'll still be $12.99 for you, but we will get a small percentage of the sale, which really helps us out. And we are on C. Remember the game you made up for this? Yeah. Okay. C is for... Constipation. I guess that is one way to go. That's the only one I could think of. Huh. I'd hate to go that way. Castration? You could bleed out, so I guess. You know. Didn't we have it in an- another letter before? No. Constipation. No. Castration. Maybe. I don't think so. Auto-castration. That's what it was. No. Autoerotic asphyxiation. Well, it's not my fault. You, you couldn't think of something original. I did it. I don't know. How do you spell cyanide? I think you do spell it for C. Oh. Well, there you go. Well, good job. I don't think I have cyanide in here either. I think that was covered by poi- or like uh, Black Widow. Oh, uh, probably. Yep. Well, we're on capital punishment. Ah, I mean, that's death, but that, it depends on where you're at and how they do it. Mm-hmm. Public executions were much like big social events, pretty much a reason to party. Yeah. All kinds of people would get together to watch a human die as party. They would have. Food of all kinds, trinkets, souvenirs sold during this public executions. Great job. It's like people. county fair. My goodness. That ain't how county fair should be. Depends on the person being executed. Yeah, I guess. I, I don't know. I like to think I wouldn't be one of the people tempted enough to go to that. Since colonial times, there have been more than 19,200 legal executions in America. Considering the book is a little bit older, it's probably more than that. Oh, yes, they're, yeah. Most of them were convicted of murder. That makes sense. Mm. Death by hanging is still an option for execution in the states of Washington and Delaware. Oh. At the time of this this book. They've contemplated bringing that and the firing squad back because of lack of uh, access to the chemicals for... Lethal injection. Yeah. Mm. Whatever happened to the gas chamber? The Holocaust. I guess. I'm assuming. I don't know. I would think it should have something to do with... Not having it. I uh, hear it was a very unpleasant way to go. Yeah. I don't think any of these ways are really pleasant, but... Mm-mm. One colonial era legal scholar, William Blackstone, wrote, As a decency, due to the sex, it was forbidden the exposing and publicly mangling of their bodies. Their sentence is to be burned alive. He was talking about women. He wrote this because men found it uncomfortable to watch a woman hang. So they burnt them. So burning them alive apparently was better. Of course. Burning at the stake allowed women to keep their clothes on while hanging. Wouldn't they have their clothes burned off, though? Yeah. I guess if the fire was big enough, you wouldn't see it. Yeah. And the twitching was seen as unladylike. Okay. Yeah. I don't think she had much of an option. Couldn't they just, like, add a weight to her feet to keep her from moving? Possibly, but... That's where the phrase, pulling my leg, comes from. Really? It's, it was considered helpful uh, if you really didn't want to watch somebody without their neck snap. They could pull on their leg and help move the process along quicker. Hmm. 24 women were hanged in Salem, Massachusetts for witchcraft and adultery. How unladylike of them. No one was legally persecuted for being a witch in the American colonies, and witchcraft was removed as a crime punishable by death after 1736. I mean, it was happening everywhere, but it hit America a little late, didn't it? I hate to imagine that going on. And we like to blame it on those rotted wheats or grain. I'm not so sure. I just think it was just bad Jealous people. women. Jealous women and bad people. Blaming other women. Yeah. Or angry men blaming women. Yeah. I think some men were also accused, weren't they? Yeah. I do believe so. It was less frequent, though, because women and all. They were women and people were just mean. I don't know how to say this last name. It's spelled O-C-U-I-S-H, but it was Hannah Ocuish. Ocuish? Ocuish? I don't don't know know how to say anything like that. She was the youngest person hanged in America. She was hanged in 1789. 
89 at age 12 for beating a six-year-old to death. Uh, that was a vicious beating. Or maybe it was just one bad hit. Maybe. I don't know. I'd like to read the story on that. Mm-hmm. 159 juveniles have been executed in America. I'd say a lot of it was earlier during the uh, Jim Crow era. Mm. I might be wrong. I just I can just see that happening then. Yeah. 66 people were burned at the stake in America. 65 of them were slaves that had escaped. It was a vicious way of getting the point across. Yeah. In 1624, Richard Cornish was accused of unnatural sexual relations. He was the first man to be hung for homosexual offense in America. When was that? 1624. Wow. The first, but certainly not the last. Yeah. At least that's what they say is, right? The first. Mm-hmm. I wonder how many more there have been. George Kendall was the very first condemned to death in North America by firing squad in Virginia for espionage. 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 Yeah. I looked that up, but I don't remember what it was. It's spying. Oh. Well, I don't, um, it happened in 1608. Well, was he fine for the French or something? I don't know. I'm just going by what the book said. Daniel Frank was the first to be hanged in North America in Virginia in 1622 for stealing, quartering, and eating a cow. In 1692, Giles Corey was executed by pressing because he refused to say anything bad about a neighbor who was under an investigation for witchcraft. These people are terrible. Yeah. The townspeople of Salem tied him to stakes in the ground and laid a wooden pallet over his body and boulders were placed on top of the pallet. When interrogators asked him questions and got no answer, they would add another boulder. Corey finally spoke after two days. With his eyes bulging, he said, more weight, and then he died. He wasn't about to do something bad, I suppose. Yeah. Moving on to cockroaches. Oh, that's a great way to go. Yeah. They have no natural enemies, apparently, but I have seen some spiders with roaches in their webs. So keep the spiders. Keep the spiders. I will take the spiders any day. They can survive comfortably at temperatures between 19 and 120 degrees. That's quite the gap. Mm -hmm. They can remain submerged in water for 15 minutes without air. A cockroach can live off the glue on a postage stamp for a month. I would like to know how they found that out. Yeah, would be nice to know. (laughs) A female can lay up to 30,000 eggs two weeks after its head has been cut off. That's another weird thing to find out. They have no venom. They're deadly due to the many diseases they carry, such as polio, typhoid, hepatitis, and salmonella. I don't like any of those. No, none. They are responsible for 65% of all food poisoning. I say that's probably where a place I used to work. Mm -hmm. We had a few people complain about food poisoning. I say that's probably why. Oh, well, see there. Now we know. I don't eat there, so. I don't either. This is spread through their feces and saliva. Feces is a great way to spread stuff. Yeah. A study in 1969 by scientists Reger, R-E-G-E-R, Reger, and Olson showed that bacteria and parasites spread by cockroaches lasted 3.67 years on a drinking glass. Nasty little guys. Uh Uh-huh. You know, I don't mind them, their appearance or anything like that. And if they're like outside, I don't care. Where we live, we see wood roaches. The wood roaches? Yeah. Which really, they, <laughs> they don't want to be They freak me out because they're bigger. And also, I don't know if regular roaches can fly, but they can. But I would much rather see a wood roach than a regular roach that infests everything. I don't think they breed as like a cockroach does. Yeah. Because you don't see, never see as many of them when you see one. It is just traumatizing for we, me. We used to have burned firewood and... Usually, right about the spring, you'd see one or two in the wood pile. And sometimes, if you carried a piece of wood in, one would travel in and fly around until you've seen it. But they, they didn't have the instinct like a cockroach to hide from people, so they're easy to find. Mm-hmm. And you could get rid of them pretty quick. And I don't think they want to be anywhere in your house. They just kind of care about the wood outside. The wood roaches. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't think they really do. Now, I have been in places where they have roaches, and I, I can't really blame them. It's, it, I mean, most people, if they try to keep their house clean, but once you get them, it's so hard to get rid of. You could hire people, but it usually takes multiple times of hiring somebody to come in and clean the house properly. Not clean it, but And also, spray it. you need to take care of it earlier. That, that was part of the problem with the place I worked at. They didn't want to take care of it when it first became an issue, and it got to be so bad. Yeah. And then when they finally did decide to get somebody professional in there, 
they didn't close it down when they were doing it. So they would be crawling on the walls as people were eating. Oh, gosh. And you, you see us employees trying to kill them and knock them off without being noticed. And we probably looked like psychopaths swatting at the walls. It's just the way some places are and they don't realize how bad it can get. Yeah. When a mouse was placed in a jar containing minuscule quantities of infected roach feces, the lab mouse died in one day. I hope they put a hole in the lid. It might explain that. Oh, they probably did. Surely they did. In 1999, 4,657 deaths were attributed to diseases transmitted or caused by roaches. Okay. Honestly, I still can handle the roaches better than I could a bed bug. Bed bugs terrify me. It's a tough situation. I, I think bed bugs are harder to get rid of, aren't they? Yeah. You have to heat the house to like to, 100 and something. <laughs> yeah. And you have to pretty much just give up all of your furniture and clothes and everything. Yeah. So I can handle roaches better. The fact that carry so I many mean, diseases. technically, it's kind of the same with roaches, but I feel like. After enough cleaning and maybe fumigating, yeah, it might be better, but I don't know. Moving on to cults. Oh, the fun ones. Yeah. Jim Jones started the People's Temple. He was the son of a Klansman. Sounds about right. He convinced people that he was a reincarnation of a mixture of Jesus and linen so that people would follow him. Wow. That is a weird combination. That. Yeah, people actually believed both. He was both. Wow. <laughs> I never heard the linen part. Was he a cool lead guy? I don't know. I bet he was a cool lead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was. I figured. He had thousands of followers by promising to lead them into salvation and save them from an upcoming nuclear holocaust. In 1977, he was forced to move his cult from San Francisco to South America. Within a year, the families of cult members got Congressman Leo Ryan to go to the South America to <laughs> South America to free anyone who wished to leave the cult. And shortly after arriving, Ryan was attacked by a mob of cult members with machetes. Uh-huh. He was slightly injured, so he quickly left, taking 18 members of the cult who wanted to return to the United States. Jones sent some of his followers to the jungle airstrip where they gunned down Leo Ryan, three journalists, and one of the cult members that was trying to leave. You shouldn't go to South America with your cultists. Yeah. You shouldn't go to South America. Tough with a cult situation because they don't realize it's a cult. At, apparently, there's a whole series on Netflix now about it. You could find out. There's a simple point. As soon as you get into the cult and they start telling you some secret things, you have to make a choice at that point. You realize things are kind of off. And if you stay longer, you get. If there's not a lot of information, and if they say they're the reincarnation of not only one, but two people, that's <laughs> your sign that, especially the not much information part. Um, in my psychology class, that I took in college. That was one of the main things. And I remember doing this assignment. We had to figure out what was what. And it was this religious group. And there was very little information. It was only like a couple of sentences of information about this religious group. And I was like, it sounds like a cult. And it turns out that was the answer. It was a cult. If there's very little information or it seems too good to be true, it probably is. Yeah. There's a lot of religions out there now that I can't imagine how they caught on. Most of them actually encourage you to be bad to other people. It's just so weird. Yeah. I can't imagine how they caught on. It had to, most of it was in a time before you had science, <laughs> I guess. So you just had their word to go on. It made more sense than anything you could figure out yourself. Yeah. A lot of them require eventually you to hand over all your belongings. No. Some religions do that now, like regular accepted religions that give us a large portion of your <laughs> income. No, I, it's hard enough to live. Why would I do that? You know, I mean, I do believe that praying is good. It, it makes you feel better as well. But actions, actions seem to help more. Yeah. I offer your religion just to try to push it on other folks and uh, don't expect it to change the world if you don't do something to help it. Mm -hmm. Preferably not by pushing it on other people. Or taking their belongings or mm -hmm. all of their money. But it ain't our job to talk about this. It's our job to tell you how these things can kill you. Mm -hmm. That evening, Jones ordered his followers to drink Kool-Aid spiked with cyanide and tranquilizers. I want to say that, is this the one that didn't even use the brand Kool-Aid? He used a cheap brand of Kool-Aid? It's in South America, so I don't know if he could find it. I know there's one that didn't even use the actual brand. Was that Heaven's Gate? Maybe. I don't know. The ones that was going to ride a comet to heaven? I thought it was a spaceship. 
It's a spaceship comet. Oh. I think that one was also in the book, but I didn't put it. I just put this one. They're still alive. A few of them uh, yeah. were told. And they to... still have the website from what I understand. Yeah, I found <laughs> it. A few of them were asked to stay behind and help find new people. And they still kept it up and running. A little hard to do after the world found out they died. Yeah. But I think they have a museum where they have a room set up the way it was found. And they still had like sneakers or something. Wow. My mama makes Kool-Aid. She made some earlier, but mostly it's just spiked like the, it's spiked effect of sugar. I'll give you the diabetes the, instead. It's diabetes. Okay. All of the followers in Jonestown did as they were told. And those who didn't were forced to drink or they were shot. Infants were given the Kool-Aid as well. They used syringes and gave the poison Kool-Aid to the infants orally. Ew. Mm-hmm. 909 died in this mass suicide. One member spit out her Kool-Aid and grabbed a gun from a fallen guard and shot Jim Jones in the head. Good woman. It's a little bit late, but yeah. Yeah. Two months later, the one who killed Jones allegedly slit the throats of her three kids and then committed suicide. Not good woman. She regretted her decisions because she thought she had done something terrible in her religion, I guess. Mm. She's like, oh, I have sinned greatly. But But that said allegedly, so it might not even be true. I don't know. I have no idea. I never heard about it. In 1979, other survivors of the People's Temple, Janae, Janie, Al Mills, and their daughter were about to speak about their cult experience when all three were shot to death in their California home. Are you kidding me? What? Which makes me believe that there was a little thing about how they thought maybe it was a CIA thing or a government thing, and that's why these people started to die after when they were about to open their mouths about it. I guess, you know, it's a possibility, but it makes me wonder if it wasn't just some of these members didn't die and they were trying to cover everything up. Yeah, it it does. Say, I don't know. It could just be people angry because their family died, but these people were victims too, so. Yeah. Are we going to go to D's today, Beth? Well, we might as well do D's because I only have two D's. Okay. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> it's more than most so i'm doing all right <laughs> d is four um d is four dogs i guess yeah i guess people have been killed by dogs drowning i, I guess that's one drowning's of them. a good one um, um dictator i think it would be considered the new a murder but we'll, we'll go with dictator we know about a few of those that's killed some people dysenteria dysentery would do it for sure just poop yourself to death yeah dating in 2003 1000 female students at pennsylvania state university were asked if they had experienced some form of sexual aggression 50 percent of them said yes 12 percent of these acts were carried out by casual dates 43 percent by steady dating partners wow I mean, and you know it's true for the most part. Mm-hmm. Well, at the time the book was, well, it said 2003, so. Mm-hmm. Bethy, that's been 20 years ago. Yeah. I was 13 years old. At the time, about three women are murdered by their boyfriends every day, according to the U.S. Department of Justice. And most of the true crime things are by relatives and boyfriends. Mm-hmm. Or exes. or Some relation. Mm-hmm. 22% of all homicides against females between the ages of 16 and 19 were committed by a dating partner. This may have changed since the book was written. <laughs> uh, I'd say a lot of it has changed since the book was written. Yeah, i say it's probably gone up. Yeah, especially after the pandemic. Mm-hmm. People being forced together or losing their home and moving in if their partner a little bit too early can lead to a lot of strife. Yeah. Doctors also kill. Dr. H.H. H. Holmes, also known as Herman Mudgett. <laughs> <laughs> was kicked out of medical school, so he became a pharmacist and later became a drug tycoon. He built a 100-room mansion with trapdoors, false walls, and secret chambers. When was this? In 1893, during the Chicago World's Fair, he rented these rooms out to visitors, so in the okay. 1800s. That's cool. He killed most of them and experimented on their bodies. That's a little less cool, but it sounds like a great video game. <laughs> he said he killed 133 people. 27 bodies were found buried in his house. Most of them were children. That's unfortunate. Yeah. He They're... preferred to lock his victims up in a room until they starved to death. Now, that's even more unfortunate. Yeah. Why? It sounds like a horrible thing. Why would he do it that way? Less interaction. I mean, it's hard to find a murder if they just starve to death. I mean. I don't know. I need to 
do an episode on him, do more research. His initials are this podcast's initials. Yeah, it is. May 7th, 1896, at 10.25 a.m., H.H. Holmes was hanged. Janine Jones, in 1984 in Texas, worked as a nurse with terminally ill children. She would inject a heart medication into infants, bringing them close to death, because she wanted to act like a savior and bring them back to life, pretty much. 46 of them didn't survive. She was eligible for parole in 2009. Is it because... She only, she got such a short amount of time because they were already dying or something? I don't think that should matter. I, that seems like a short period to be in prison for that. Yeah. He, <laughs> I, I, I hope she didn't get it. The fact they didn't say she stayed in probably means she did. I don't know. It, it depends on how old she was, too. Maybe. Well, they also didn't have as much information on H.H. H. Holmes as there is about him. Yeah. There's a I mean, lot it, on you can't You can only put so much in a book. Yeah. Terry Rachels worked as a nurse in Albany, Georgia. She allegedly killed 20 elderly patients with potassium chloride, which causes symptoms that seem like the same effects of cardiac arrest. Smart woman, really. I don't know if that was a woman or a man. Oh. I think it was a woman. But in 1984, was sentenced to 17 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. How many people did she kill? Allegedly killed 20. That's that's not their small number. No. Dr. Donald Harvey killed at least 23 patients by injecting them with various lethal substances, including arsenic cyanide and petroleum-based cleansers. Um, Some of his victims were used for his occult ceremonies on his homemade altars. He was sentenced to life. He should be. Dr. Harold Shipman, between 1975-1998, 887 of his patients died. He was convicted in 2000. 394 died of natural causes, 172 unknown causes, and 215 injected with pharmaceutical heroin. Depending on their taste, that might have been their preferred way to go. When was this? Frank Gallagher. Yeah. Uh, between 1975 and 1998. All oh, these people. He believed that allowing the terminally ill to die with a tremendous heroin rush was a painless and blissful way to end their suffering. What is this guy's name? Dr. Harold Shipman. Okay, he sounds a lot like Kevorkian, or I don't even know if Kevorkian was a doctor, to be honest. Mm, never heard of it. Kevorkian, the guy who would go around and assist people to commit suicide that were terminally ill. Mm. He's the one that really got the whole right to die movement going. Oh, in January 4th, 2012, he hung himself in jail. Right to die, I suppose. Yeah, that's the end of the C's and D's. Oh, well, I enjoy these little episodes. Well, thank you. If you like what you heard here, go to the Gruesome Gaming Group's uh, link in the description. It's our podcasting network, and you can find a couple other podcasts that we do. One that Beth and I do called uh, Brother Knows Quest. It's a podcast where I take a random tabletop role-playing game down to her house. Well, now I just take it off the shelf. And now we just hide in the closet. Hide in the closet and record so it's easier to record. I'll tell her about the RPG, and she'll tell me if she'd like to play it. Usually we cover the setting more than the rules, but I do have to get into the rules occasionally. And another one that we have is a podcast I do with my good friend Dakota, where we talk about video games and the games that we've played, mostly video games, some of them RPGs as well, tabletop games. But it's games we've played as we grew up and have really enjoyed and kind of make us who we are. We have a Twitter account called Gruesome Gaming G. If you want to follow us on there, tweet at us, tell us things you'd like us to cover. And if you want to leave a review and you have a podcast player to let you do that, that'd be nice. I haven't ever asked for reviews until recently, and I think I should start asking. Even if they're not good ones, we'd like to hear from them and try to correct our mistakes. Beth, do you have a way to contact you or anything? Horrifichistory.hauntings at gmail.com. Okay, and the Pinterest? It's also Horrific History and Hauntings. I've been Ramey. And I'm Beth. Thank you for listening to HH&H. Bye-bye. <laughs>